It was a cold, dark night. The kind of night that makes a family man shiver, a lonely man go mad. There were... It was a beautiful sunlit morning. The kind of morning where you expect to wake to bacon and eggs and a rooster crowing. You could... It was 5.30 on a dreary, overcast morning. The sun was just threatening to come up, like a runny Spanish omelette on the edge of a cheap diner plate. Bob Lay. Joe Lay. Biff. Sam. Mortimer. Harold. Grip. Grip lay with his legs stretched across his desk, his hat tipped over his head. His chair held him as he slept, like a baby in a bassinet. Only the night before, he'd just been running, scared, life in limbo, the hardest case of his life. It was meatloaf night at his mother's. Harold? Harold, are you in there? It is almost dinner time and you promised to mow the lawn. Harold! Suddenly, a, a noise stirred up to consciousness like a spark in a pile of dead leaves. His eyes fluttered open like a newborn sparrow. Then he heard it again. Harold, do you hear me? Yes, this here is. I'll be down in just a few more minutes, Tessie, my honey love. You better be, Harold. Little Dirk's got a bloody nose and Mabel can't find her Sally suit doll and I've got a splitting headache. It was the sound of this lock being picked. He slowly rose to his feet, his hands fingering the cold metal of old Betty like... His hands fingering the cold metal of old Tessie, like passionate fingers on the neck of a lover. As he slid toward the door, he could make out a shadow through the glass pane of the door, the word detective plastered against it, like a shabby tattoo. His heart pounding, Tessie in hand, he was awaiting the impending violence. He licked his pasty lips, fighting past the sickening taste in breath. His fingers tensed on Tessie. As his eyes watched the doorknob slowly turn, slowly, slowly. Then, with a final push, the door swung open and. Nanny! Dirk stole my piggy. I didn't get turned to make a bacon out of it. It's not fair. Dirk said it is. Mabel, you, you. You know Daddy is busy now. You, you know Daddy is writing, Snookums. But Daddy, Dirk has three piggies. I don't think it's fair if- Mabel, Mabel, Mabel. Y you just tell Dirk he has to share. O okay, sugar pie? Y you just tell him that Dadum said so. Okay, bunny love. Yeah, okay. A figure, and at just the right moment, threw his overcoat over his victim and pounced. He pounced and, and leaped and pushed, and sprung, and pounced, dragging him to the floor like a tiger readying his evening meal. Leaving the meat on the floor for the moment, he raced to the wall and flipped it on, instantly turning the room into a carnival of blinding light, closing the door. Him, <sighs> Closing. The door. Grip returned to his victim and onto his back. Then he carefully unwrapped him with a sneer, like a brat unwrapping a Tommy gun on Christmas. He stepped back for eyes. Before him lay a beautiful piggy. <laughs> <clears throat> Lady, you ain't you ain't getting it. I don't care what Daddy says. This is war. She coughed and shook her head, trying to shake off the stranglehold the unwitting Grip had reflexively applied only moments before. As she struggled to sit up, Grip grabbed a coffee mug and began to pour a cup of... Uh, he, he, he grabbed a mug and looked look for some water to... He, he grabbed a glass and an open bottle of scotch he always kept in his back. And he... 
grabbed a glass and an open bottle of scotch he always kept in his bottom drawer for emergencies. And next to her, pour her a shot, no, a double, and place it near her lips. He then pushed it back into his shocked face, laughing scornfully at <laughs> the scotch cascaded on his face like morning dew off a cactus spike. Then, just as suddenly, she grabbed his face and kissed him violently. Abruptly, she broke away, gathered her belongings, and headed for the door, leaving Grip stunned, hurt, angry, and wet. Abruptly, he moved and swiftly to her. As she opened the door, he, the sheer force of his hand, pushed it closed again. He turned to her expectantly and led them back to their places on the floor, hungrily eyeing those lips that had inflicted such a delicious wound. Then, from the depths of his maleness, he commanded, Do it again! Obediently, she poured another shot of sauce and splashed it onto his face. <laughs> no, I meant the... Never mind. Please sit down. I am. Good. Who are you? I cannot tell you, but... Here is my number. You can call me anytime. So there it was. She hadn't meant to, but she'd already given him a close kept secret that would begin to unravel her like a badly knit shawl. You can call me anytime. All right, anytime. Now tell me. But. It's okay now. I know. So. He had a beautiful mystery game named Anytime, with an accent. Uh, what, what was that? And that accent, dollface. He looked at her with infinite intelligence. Um... He looked at her with a lot of intelligence. Hmm. I'd say you were from Macon, Georgia, southwest side, in a left, with, on the left-hand corner of the street, with a, with a backyard with um, a row of begonias in it, two miles from Bob's Burger Joint. But, but how did you draw those conclusions? I get paid to draw those conclusions, honey. I was right, wasn't I? No. Close? Not even close. Um, little Shack in Texas. No. More bedroom colonial in San Francisco. Nope. Mansion in Vermont. Not. He flashed a mock smile. She was playing hard to get. The schoolyards of the Bronx. The stockyards of Chicago. A ranch in Wyoming. Sorry. Then it struck him. <gasps> You're not from this country, are you? Yes. <gasps> but, but how did you draw those conclusions? Yeah, it's my business to draw them. Now tell me any time. You what any time? Don't be cute. Why did you come here? Someone said your office was decorated in disgusting puke green. I had to see for myself. They were white. She was toying with him like a cat and a trapped mouse. You're being pursued, aren't you? Yes, but how did you- Stop asking questions! The man who's pursuing you, he wants you- Murdered, yes! She jumped her feet and... I don't know. She slowly got to her feet and... She struggled to trying to determine where to begin to make sense of it all. I was a painter when I lived in Russia many years ago. I could tell those slim, artistic hands look like they paint in many a landscape. What? No. Painter, you know, like this. I paint football on fourth down. Oh. She was a painter. And as her story unfolded, she'd been a good one. Until her coach let her go one day. 
that that that's when she tears in her eyes. She packed up her belongings and headed to America. <laughs> Harold. That's here. Harold. It's 5 p.m. You do know what that means, right? Yeah, yes. The, the, the big hand, it's on the 12. And, and the little hand. No, um, no. It means one, that the kids are starving. And two, um, I am, I've got a splitting headache. So what are you doing that's more important than your lovely wife and kids? I want to know. T Tessie, dearest, you'll be so fat <laughs> out of me. I, I'm writing this, this pig play. <laughs> this play. Another play, huh? Whatever happened to those mailing doodads you were writing? There was money in them. To Tessie, sweetest, this is a play. Can't you imagine Dora Harold writing a play? They, they get Pulitzer Prizes for this stuff. Pulitzer one of them beers, Harold? I don't want one of them beer companies interviewing me. No, no, Tessie. Yeah, 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 look, look. Just a few more paragraphs and I'll be down for dinner. Okay, love. 60 seconds, my little mud hen. Not a second more. Pulitzer, honestly. <clears throat> when she was done with her story, she sat down next to him and peered into his eyes questioningly. Give it all to me any time. It'll be better that way. Come clean with me. Not understanding his strange invitation to clean with him, the Russian stood quietly and began to dust the chair she spoke. When I came to America, I had not much money. Yes? Yes? So I had to become a pudding instructor. A pudding instructor, you mean? Yes, pudding. It was the... Yes, you know, I teach golfers how to pud. Ah, pudding! Yes, pudding. It was the only way I could make a living. And then, a man A note of fear struck discord in her voice. Ah! There, there, there was a- oh, um, um, hey, you, you know whenever one of those organs, you know, you know how they play that, like, sound, and it, it's, it's, you know? Oh, yes, yes, most definitely, you know, what those, that chord thing. He was a big man, and his grip! His grip! Yes! 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 No! No! Look! Oh. Yeah, which one you got the large pizza with uh, green olives and anchovies? Oh, right here. Hey, that woman, she's... she's... She's a punning instructor. She's dead! You killed her! You, you- Relax, relax, relax. Kill her! I'm calling the police, buddy. Hey, hey! What about my pizza? Yeah, sorry about that. That would be, uh, 1352? Wait a minute, I've got- Wait! I've got a coupon. Huh. Yeah, no came due. That expired last week. Oh, come on. You're telling me that if- Hey! I don't make the rules. Nice tip. Thanks. Sure. See ya. See ya. You murder! You fiend! Help, please, murder! Murder you if you do not come out right now! Yeah, yes. Coming, okay. Coming. Daddy, don't call me a fat pig. N now, jerk, I did not. I called you a fat twit. 
Now, now, Dirk, I... Harold, do something with these brats while I hit the meatloaf. Communists! Children! I am not! R2! I am not! Uh, Dad? What's a communist? Just get off the call! Hey, psst, you, the thought form on the floor. I heard you, I heard you already. Can you believe this? Look, this is where Harold left us, so this is where we've got to stay. Got it? <sighs> no need to get testy there. I, I already know all the rules for us thought forms. I even have the latest edition of Rules for Thought Forms book. It's just that... What? I'm tired of being part of these inane little plays, you know. For every Arthur Miller or William Shakespeare, there are a hundred Harold Finnegans. I know. Look, this is how they learn, okay? You're tired of it? Resign. Don't be a theater thought form anymore. Be a, be a carpenter thought form or a movie thought form. Everyone's got thoughts, bub. Just don't bother me. I'm resting. You know, I tried being a movie thought form once. For a while, I was Sylvester Stallone's idea of a good time. Oh, man, that was rough. But no, I want to be a theater thought form. It's just that I studied Shakespeare. Oh, I know, I know. You studied Shakespeare, but you're spending all your time on Finnegan. Yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm hoping that there's at least a way to change how the story is going, or at least find another play. Or help this Harold guy with his. Yeah, I think that too sometimes. But there ain't, isn't. So. Hey! Helping Harold out with a play! That sounds like a great idea! I mean, he's got this plot going on about a Russian spy. Anytime. Can you believe it? No, but... I mean, I'm supposed to be this detective... Grip? Ugh. Yeah, grip. Man, my neck is stiff. Roll your head a little bit. Always works for me. But I can't, right? Those are the rules, right? Oh, well, if you're gonna live and die by them... Go ahead, roll your neck a little bit. Won't kill anyone. I'm not watching. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Oh. Thank you. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> Don't mention it. Hey, wait a minute. If we could both do that, we could do anything we wanted. I mean, I mean, we could write the script for him, couldn't we? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I was just scratching my back. Oh, but think of all the possibilities. We both know the theater. We both play just about every part there is. Yeah, but trouble is, they've got to do the writing, not you. Who says so? <laughs> Who says so? I I don't know. That's just the way that it is with thought forms. They have to do the writing, not us. Hmm. hmm. Have you ever been the thought form for anyone insane? Yeah, so? A lot more freedom wasn't there. True, true. And besides, it's all for a worthy cause. Now look, Harold's about to come come back because it is how do you know that oh before you interrupted me i was about to say it is 5 15 and it means that harold and the family are about to get done with dinner and that piece of work tessie is about to give the brats a bath correcto mundo which means that harold will want to come upstairs to write in peace yeah. 
So quick, we, we haven't much time. Now, first off. First off, I'm hungry. So why don't we use your charm to get us a bite to eat? Hmm. Add, add pizza. Check. And second, let's nix this ridiculous name anytime. How about something more mysterious like Christina? Hmm. I like that. Nix anytime. Add Christina. Check. Now, we don't have much in terms of characters, except for Pizza Guy, who's about to go off and get the police. Good, good. Good? Yeah, good. Let him get the police. At least it'll bring more people into this thing. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose so. Develop subplot with police. Check. I don't want to take a bath! You have to. You smell. You two, Dirk! Into the bathtub! Both of you! But I don't want to take a bath! You have to. You smell. Mom! Uh-oh. He's coming back. I can feel it. Oh, Man, I yeah, hate I hate that. Say, before the, uh, before we get back to the play, I didn't really get your name. Honey Lake. Honey Lake? Yeah. Want to make something of it? No, no, no. I'm Bob Smith. <laughs> Your mom only knew seven letters. Actually, I would like to tell you that- yes. As eager as a vulture swooping down on roadkill, Grip returned to the couch with the pizza in hand. As he's about to open the box, he remembered any time still on the floor. He returned to her, and held her tenderly around the waist, and performed the Heimlich maneuver. Yes, yes, yeah. The, the good old Heimlich that he'd learned while cutting paths in the forest of India. After the third squeeze, <coughs> time to get the cough, he turned her around in his arms and looked at her and said, Christine. Christina time? Cr Christina! Ah, mysterious, elusive, Russian. It's okay, Christina time. It's okay. He's gone. She awakened slowly, as if from a bad dream, and smiled weakly at Grip and said, I'm so hungry for a pizza. Tired of pizza? What the heck? Oh, man. You must not let that man come here. You must stop him. No police. Why not the police? Why? <laughs> because, because, I'll tell you for a piece of pizza. Uh. Because I once dated. And... We didn't hit it off. Oh, for crying out loud, Harold. Oh, honey. Don't you honey me. I have had it up to here with this two-bit writer. I mean, come on. What in the... What in the heck is going on here? Uh, these, you, you're my thoughts. Now you just get back in here, cause I'm not through yet. Well, let's face it, Harold. The lady's right. 
even if you do get through this poor excuse of a play, do you think you're going to actually be able to sell it? I mean, the Heimlich Maneuver and an anchovy pizza in the same scene? Does that sound like Neil Simon on Broadway kind of stuff to you? Well, well no, but th this is just a draft. Th the first draft. You're not going to fill my head with self-doubt. You're not going to fill my head with self-doubt. Because then I really wouldn't be able to write. And wouldn't America mourn that? Look, Harold. I have never, in 73 years of being a theater thought form, ever walked out on a concept. But I am turning a new leaf for you. I mean, what a waste. Two perfectly good thought forms wasting their time on Finnegan when 101 other writers could be at least having mediocre thoughts. You are without a doubt the worst. But, but, but if you leave, you know, what do I have then? Writer's block, baby. Happens every day. Probably be better for it. Writer's block. So, this is what it feels like after 13 years, 46 plays, all rejected. And, and now? Yeah, Toots. Didn't want to say anything. But this little beauty is better than the other 45. You're a legend among the thought forms. I mean, last year, it was an attempt to turn Old MacDonald's Had a Farm into a dark musical about the government. You know, as in C-I-C-I-A. <laughs> oh, you're kidding, aren't you? Uh, well, um, what will I do if I can't write? You're a carpet salesman, Harold. You sell carpets. Rugs, remnants. This is just another remnant. Cut it up and throw it away. You're not a writer. So what? Most people aren't. Better you know now before you waste another 13 years. A, a carpet salesman. Hm. Maybe you're right. Maybe that is what I am. Funny, at parties people ask me what I do. I say, I'm a writer, but I sell carpets to support my habit. Wink, wink. You know, maybe I should just say, I'm a carpet salesman, have been for 20 years, period. Why is it that the question, what do you do for a living, gets so much harder as you get older? Now, now look, Harold, Harold, she, she's just having a bad day. Everybody has their bad days, right? No, 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 she, she's, she's right. <sighs> no, Bob's right. I mean, I'm just... Hungry, you know? I get uh, cranky when I'm hungry. Ask the other thought forms I've worked with. Maybe if I could have a bite of, to eat? Uh, go ahead. Help yourself. Oh, well, you take the anchovies off this. I hate those little boogers. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure thing. Mmm, deep dish. Y y you know, uh, it's not like I haven't heard any of this stuff before. Y y you know, Tessie, my, my wife? We know. Oh, yeah, uh, right. Well, anyway, she's always asking me why I'm wasting my time on this stuff. Could be out selling more carpets, she says. Like, Sheila Cryline. Ugh, Sheila Cryline, a, a co-worker of mine. A snot-nosed, obnoxious kid who's got a gift for the gab. That's all. Nobody likes her, but she can sell. Couldn't last two minutes in Grip's world. L let me ask you something. Here, do I look ordinary to you? Yeah. Thanks for being honest with me. Inside, I may look ordinary, but I'm a lion. Rawr. Really? Really? People come in to buy carpets, see? I smile and show them the ones they asked for. They say, no, 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 no. I want to see something in a brown. And I say, sure, something in a brown. Then they say, no, 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 no. It has to be a thicker weave, see? I say, sure, thicker weave. Have you seen our new high pile line? They haven't, so I show it to them. 
An hour later, with every sample in the store in front of them, you know what they say? They say, oh, thanks for all your help, but we'll take a rain check. Oh, and then I spend the next 30 minutes, see? Oh, I'm putting back all of those samples, see? But inside, inside, I'm seething, because that lady, when I, whenever that lady asks for brown, I, I inside, I'm telling that lady, what in the world do you want brown for? It doesn't go with anything. Because... And then, when that lady, that, when she asks for a thicker weave, oh, inside I'm telling that lady it looks like her husband could use a thicker weave. Because the rug he has is wearing thin. Because inside, oh, and when she says she'll take a rain check, I'm telling that lady where she can take it. Because it's Inside, inside, I am a lion, a fierce, terrible, ferocious lion who will not take no for an answer. Oh my god, will you please shut up in there? You are driving me crazy. Sorry, Tessie, my angel. It's my wife. We know. Right. So, so you see. Inside. Oh, who am I kidding? You know me. I, I sell rugs. <laughs> hey, hey, Harold, Harold, it's okay. It's okay, Harold. Yeah, you know, maybe greeting cards could work for you. I, I, I tried those. Hallmark sent them back addressy unknown. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> Pizza? No. I'd like one. Oh, um, if that's okay with you, Harold. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Mind an observation. Uh, no, go, go ahead. That's one intense wife you've got there. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tessie? She's changed, but I love her, you know? Why? <laughs> oh, oh, if I may ask. Well, she can actually be quite nice, actually. Oh, wait a second. I, I, I just realized, you know, if I'm talking to you, my, my thoughts? That's right. You're talking to yourself. Nothing to worry about. Happens every day. Right. Well, anyway, uh, I have this vision of her. You know, when we were on our honeymoon in, in Paris all the, those years ago, I was excited to see my bride, you know, as she was finishing her getting dressed. And then all of a sudden that door opened and there was my angel, all in blue. And you know what? I thought to myself, my gosh, what a lucky man I am. How romantic. Yeah. <laughs> she led me to the couch. Hey, get off the call. Would you mind? <laughs> I remember the evening exactly. I even remember sirens going by outside. Um, wait a second. Sirens, uh, hey, uh, Grip, Christina, we gotta get you guys back in here. Yeah. Because we this need more guy's a for punishment. We can still leave. Nah, uh, I'm starting to feel bad for the guy. Plus, I don't have anyone else on the docket for today. Do you? <sighs> You're right. 9.02 tonight, I do have a politician who's got an idea about how to get rid of the budget deficit in the town. But, that's nothing new. Same old stuff, so I guess I'll stay. And here we go! Hey, um, Harold? <clears throat> Your, um, wife? She's still- Just then, the sirens began to wail, louder and louder, like your neighbor- or on six o'clock on a Sunday morning. They came to rest outside Grip's office. 
He then leapt up to peer out the window. It's the police, sugar. We gotta be quick. Right now they think I murdered you, but when they find out that's not the case, I have a feeling it won't go there easy on you. So tell me, why would the police want a Russian punter who formerly dated the chief of police? Because, because, you better make this good, Harold. Uh, okay. Because... Because he's got a jealous wife, that's why. And how would you know that? Because I'm the wife. Harold, do we really have to do that every every time something shocking comes into the play? I mean, when you think about it, it's really demeaning to the audience, don't you think? They get it all without the dun 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 bit, if you know what I mean. Well, you, you may have a point, Griff. Uh, I'll think about it. Oh, uh, hey, I, I, I never pictured you in this play, Sugar. Uh, you, it's so interesting. You never invited me in, Apple Blossom. Right. Well, uh, let's keep going. Oh, Griff, protect me! I had no idea he was married! But before anyone could respond, the gravel tones of a bullhorn rang out from below. Alright, Grip, come down with your hands up. This is police officer number one. Police officer number one? I, I can't think of a name yet, so, you know, I'm just calling him police officer number one. Do you mind? This is just a draft. Do you think Shakespeare, the names Hamlet and Macbeth, all picked out in his first draft? He's got a point, honey. Yeah, okay. Sorry. I've got orders here to take you in for first degree murder. First degree? That's not very hot grip, no? No, no, no. It means that. It means. It means it's premeditated murder, baby. Your lover boy here is going down hard. Murder? But he didn't kill me. I'm not dead. Yeah, you see, it's all a big misunderstanding, ma'am. You see, there was this pizza guy, and she fainted, and he. I don't think it was a mistake. You see, she is going to die. Um, no, wait. You see, I don't think it was a mistake. She is going to get hurt. <gasps> Sorry, I, I just don't like violence. Jeez. No, no, look, look, sweetheart, you don't want to do that. There are a million cops down there and- Don't sweetheart me. My husband's the chief of police. Somehow they're going to believe my story, not yours. She's got a point, Christina. Really. Go for it! Christina raced to the door before Trixie could. Th that's you, sweetheart. Trixie. Yeah, hi. Before Trixie could pull the trigger, Christina yanked the door open, and for there at the door were five armed policemen, ready to go off in her face like a time bomb. What are you doing here? Who are you? Well, I'm police officer number one. You, uh, might have heard me on the bullhorn a moment ago. You have a nice voice. And this is police officer number two. Nice to meet you. Police officers three and four. Ma'am. Ma and I suppose that last one is police officer number five. Oh, him? No, he doesn't even really have a placeholder name. Not likely to be around in the second act. No need for a name. Know what I mean? Oh. Hey, police officer number one. Ain't that the boss's wife? Yes, it is. Hi. How nice of you to stop by. What are you doing here, ma'am, if I may ask? Look behind her. She's got a loaded hand. Enough out of you, ma'am. I've, 
I was being held hostage by these two thugs here. What? She's lying! Right. Now we've got you for murder, and now attempted kidnapping. I'll just be going now. But I'll be back. <gasps> Arnold Schwarzenegger! Now, now, look around you, people. Does it look like anybody was murdered here? That's right. Do you see any bodies? I see lots of bodies, Dollface. Can the small talk. The rest of you, search this apartment for anything dead. Now. Yes, sir. We've got a pizza guy who swears you murdered a doll in here. A doll? Is that illegal in your country? In my country, we have story, but not here. But... Hi. We didn't find anything dead. Except an old ham on rice sandwich that's got mold on it. Hey, you're supposed to be dead. Suddenly, Rick wrestled young police officer number three's rubber band to the ground and pushed him. Then, just as quickly, he grabbed Pizza Guy around the neck and aimed the rubber band directly at his throat. Rick uttered his threat. Tatessi! You're back. What do you mean? I'm back, you no good. I was bathing the children while you were wasting your time at that good-for-nothing typewriter. She doesn't know. She was right here in my thoughts. And she was so sweet, so beautiful. Just like she was with you. Okay, Harold, I'm going to go put them to bed now, and I expect you to be with me to tuck the little runs in. Oh, 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 okay, Tess. In a minute, love. She is not a happy woman. Except when she's in my thoughts. I wonder if that works for anybody. Sheila Cryline. <laughs> uh, Grip uttered his threat. All right, now. Drop the bands or the kid gets it. All right, boys, drop them. You're making a mistake, Grip. I've made him before. Once, I think. No, wait. Actually, twice. Well, that makes three now. All right, now, back up through the doors, back up past it, and be real slow with your hands up and drop those bands on the floor. All right. Good job. Nice and easy. Harold, we need a back door. How are we going to get out of here? As they exited, Christina ran to the door, closed it, and locked it tight. It was as snug as your pants after a Thanksgiving meal. Then they ran to the trap door. How will we get out? You see, darling, this may look like a trap, uh, like a regular floor, but it actually is a secret trap door. Oh, how grip! You think of everything? Not everything, baby. You mean? Yes. Of my car keys in my desk. I'll get them for you, Grip. Hey, yo, why don't you let me go? I'm just... And I got a delivery to make. And if I'm going to be late, I'm going to lose my tip. Well, you see, you may seem just like an ordinary pizza guy, but you happen to be our key to a big time pizza syndicate mobster. You see, I know you. You're the son of a guy with no class. A got a snot nose of not just kidding, he's got a gift for the gab. That's it. Haven't we heard that somewhere, Christina? Keep going. A guy with all mouth and no brains. He must look funny. <laughs> I'm talking about Sheila Cryline, your mother! Will you stop that? Okay, okay. No, no, not Sheila Cryline, formerly known as Sheila Krylinski. 
who is an ex Russian sponsor. You know her? No. But you said that she was a punter just like you. Okay, okay. I know her. But I was a punter. She was a painter, mint a brush. Ah, oh, what kind? Impressionist or surrealist? Mostly just bathrooms and houses with metal siding. Oh. So you see, we can't leave. We can't let you go, pizza guy. I need you to take me to your mother! Hey! Okay, okay, I will, I will. But you're gonna regret this. Suddenly, an unmistakable, evil laugh is heard over the bullhorn. <laughs> That laugh, it is unmistakably evil. And then, the silence that followed. This is your friend, Grip. Your old friend. I know you, my boy. And now, I want you to know that I'm coming to get you. <laughs> Told you, smarty pants. Harold, you really gonna bring this jerk Sheila wants her face up in here? Oh, oh you betcha. Second act, burner burner. That snot knows little saleswoman. I've got subplots and plot twists and stuff you just ain't gonna believe in the second act. You just wait. Oh, yeah, girl, go ahead. Um, can we take a break right about now? I need to, um,. Use the facilities, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. I gotta go tuck those little runs in the bed, you know? Uh, but the audience would probably need a break right about now, so what do you guys say we call this the end of back one? I'm game. All right, All right, game. All right guys, um, well then I'll uh, see ya. See ya. Well, Margo. Things seem to be shipping up in this play of yours. After a rocky start, I might add. Tut tut, Eduardo, dearest. Haven't I always started off slowly? And haven't you always been able to make life saving suggestions that enabled me to have six Broadway hits in a row? Hmm, don't you get that, baby? I won't, darling, I won't. What do you mean, my fact, too, dearest? A surprise, dear. Ooh, audiences love surprises. Not for the audience, dear. For Harold. <laughs> uh, for Harold, the writer. You mean the thought for who thinks he's a writer? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Show starts in ten minutes. What is it? Say, what is it? Hey, why it's buttercup? Popcorn and sweet cream butter too hot popcorn. Mix it up, wrap it up, buttercup is born. It's delicious. So nutritious. It's a taste delight. It's so munchy. Crisp and crunchy. You'll enjoy each bite. Eat butter crunched buttercup. Popcorn at its best. Served in a king size cup. It beats all the Show starts in nine minutes. Here's a new taste treat. The corn dog. Plump, juicy wieners are dipped in a thick, golden, southern-style corn batter that seals in all their freshness and flavor. If you like hot dogs, you love corn dogs. Everybody does. Try a corn dog with your favorite beverage at the refreshment corner now.
corn dogs. Show starts in eight minutes. Today, we're interviewing a stomach. Hello there. What is life like as a stomach? Oh, boy, it was humdrum. I mean, until what's-his-name discovered Tony's Pizza. Tony's Pizza? Yeah, I was suffering from the pizza cravings until Tony's came along. Crispy crust and zesty sauces. <laughs> wow. And so now... What's that? Another pizza craving. Just thinking about Tony sets it off. Oh, wh where are you going? He's going to get a Tony's pizza. And I follow him anyway. Does your stomach send you pizza craving signals? Oh, wow. Tony's, the pizza craver's pizza. Available at the concession stand. <laughs> Show starts in seven minutes. It's refreshment time, folks. Taste that beats the others cold. Pepsi pours it on. Taste that beats the others cold. Pepsi pours it on. Yum, yum. It's a meal in itself. Our all-meat super dog. Enjoy one now. Show starts in six minutes. Men, there's a drive-in movie full of juicy people. Wow! It, it's a trap! Uh, help! It's Pick! We've had it, men. <laughs> a pleasant aroma for you, but not for mosquitoes. Pick is easy to use. Light it and forget it. Pick's aroma keeps mosquitoes, gnats, and sand flies away. Pick is the best protection for barbecues, fishing and camping trips, or just relaxing in the yard. So if you don't want our company ever anywhere, just like Pick and see what I mean? Bye! Pick is on sale at the refreshment stand now. Show starts in five minutes. A cup of whipped hot chocolate tastes great right now. Carnation's Cocoa Supreme, the delicious hot chocolate drink with the light, delicate flavor you like. Wouldn't a good hot cup taste good right now? Ask for a cup of whipped hot chocolate at our snack bar. Show starts in four minutes. Yum, yum. It's time for a tasty and refreshing snack. Promise to satisfy your hunger, your thirst, your sweet tooth. So visit our refreshment center now. Let's go! 
Show starts in three minutes. Show starts in two minutes. Won't you come with me along the milkshake way? I've got lots of good surprises, fresh and yummy for you every day. There are malts and shakes and sundaes too, whenever you stop. And of course, your very, very favorite, the cone with the curl on top. You don't have to just dream about Dairy Queen. Your favorite Dairy Queen treat is a refreshing reality at your nearest Dairy Queen store. Show starts in one minute. Before our patrons, men, women, boys, girls, through the cooperation of leading business places, you may now have free admission to this theater. Ask for dividend tickets when you shop at... Names of merchants who give dividend tickets are listed in the lobby of the theater and on circulars at the concession stand. Dividend tickets will be accepted on all standard box office priced films. So take a circular with you today and start saving dividend tickets tomorrow when you shop. See your next movie completely free. And now, on with the show. <laughs> oh, brother. I cannot seem to sleep when I'm in the middle of a play. Seems like I just have to find out how these things end. It's funny how these things seem to write themselves. Well, let's see if there's any magic left in these fingers. So what do you do, Dolores? I told him, hey, buddy, I don't operate that way. Thought forms got principles, too. <laughs> don't you guys ever sleep? Harold, we're thought forms. We don't get tired. That's the beauty of this job, honey. Sounds like me when I'm writing. Can't sleep a wink. Hey, who is this anyway? Oh, this is my friend Dolores. Hi. She was between thoughts, so I thought she could maybe help us out. I mean, you wanted more characters in this thing anyway, right? Well, yeah, but I'm a writer, not a magician. I can't just zap her in that easily. Oh, Harold, I'm sure you'll think of something for my friend, won't you? Um, yeah, I, I guess. Let, let's get this thing started for Tessie and the kids wake up, you know? Ooh, <laughs> there's a horrible thought form right there. Dirk and Mabel. Those little terrors waking up and wreaking havoc on this play. Say, 
What time is it, anyways? 4 a.m. and our store is having a big paint sale today. Everything you know from blue to gray is on sale at our store today. I wrote that. Anyway, you know, I gotta get in early, so get, let's get this thing started. Paint? paint? Uh, you mean rugs? Yeah, carpets. Where have you guys been? I, I sell paint. Oh, come on, guys. You're, you're inside. You're, you're, you're supposed to know everything going on. You guys don't remember that whole, like, paint soliloquy in the first act? I, I poured my heart out to you. You don't remember, like, inside? I'm a tiger. Hate to break it to you, Harold, but you sold rugs in act one. And I specifically remember you being a lion inside, not a tiger. <laughs> I, I was not. Well, I don't know what this is supposed to mean. I either sell paint or I sell rugs. Which are both stupid things to sell. I know, it's just weird. After what you told us. Um, excuse me, I know I'm not supposed to be on yet, but might I suggest you solve this dilemma by simply going to get the briefcase, you know, the one with all the samples in it? Hmm, yes. Everything from blue, blue to, to, blue blue to gray. gray. Right. Why don't you go and check? Maybe even bring it in here? That would certainly solve this dilemma. And then we can get back to your tremendously suspenseful and thrilling play. Hmm. Great idea, Jane. Thanks, Grip. Bob. Yes, well, I suppose it is an easy way to clear up all of this nonsense. Uh, hey, 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 Grip. Is she a real police officer? Typecasting. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, you guys better be ready to get started. You are nasty, Mongo. Play with the man's livelihood. A platform's livelihood, my sweet Eduardo. Everyone would like to think they are free to do what they will, but as Harold will discover, that is simply a mistaken, archaic notion. He won't be happy, Angel. But the point is, he has no choice. He must learn to accept that if he wants to be free, if he wants to be happy in any real sense at all. Interesting. Come, let's get back to the typewriter. You've got me anxious to see what happens next. Dolores here, though. She's a strange one. Why, well, my love? What do you have planned for her? I really don't know. Sometimes characters just pop off my fingertips, Eduardo. She just sort of appeared. Well, you'll think of something for her, I'm sure. I look forward to that. I bet. <laughs> Well, I'm having fun. This is certainly one of the stranger plays I've been in. You ain't kidding. And funny thing is, even with Harold out of the room, I still feel that tugging feeling you get when the author's thinking of something. Really? Not me. What about you, Jane? Me? Yes. Yes, I think I agree with Christina. It's as if Harold were still here, typing away, telling us what to do. <sighs> Well... Where's your sample case? Rugs. It's full of rugs. Could you perhaps be looking in the wrong case? What? You think Tessie moonlights as a rug salesman on the side? Sorry. No, the fact is, I sell rugs. Well, maybe the whole paint thing was just a dream, Harold? Yeah, maybe, but... You're probably just not feeling well, Harold. Here, you just stay seated and write us a good second act. That'll make you feel better. Yes, well, I, I suppose. Strange. Okay, okay, uh, for starters, would everyone clear the call, please? Sure. No problem. See ya. Come on, Harold. Get your act together, little playwright's joke. <laughs> don't let it shake you, kid. You don't sell paint, you sell rugs. Good, 
Now let's write a second act that'll knock their socks off. And so, Grip, world famous sleuth, exits out the secret door to his office with the mysterious Russian football player and pizza guy, whose mother was named Sheila Kryline, who talked to sugar but drooled acid. In so doing, he left a team of policemen outside the building searching for his red hot trail, like St. Bernard searching for buried victims after an avalanche. But he also made a mistake he hadn't made since his mom used to scold him years ago for the same thing. He left the secret door unlocked, and in from the dark of pre-dusk stepped Sheila Kryline's right-hand lady, Bitsy Tupan. Bitsy's incredible intelligence made a mockery of every Ivy League college, like Michael Jordan against the team of high schoolers. Bitsy knew mathematics. Bitsy knew electronics. Bitsy knew Garth Brooks. Okay, well, he, he'd only signed her autograph like once at a concert, but most of all, you see, Bitsy knew Grip. Because you see, Bitsy was Grip's daughter. Like a crack carpenter on this old house, Bitsy sized up the office and selected the right tool from her belt. Ah, uh, a high voltage electronic impulse sending arcs of positive hydrogen ion through the air in an attempt to phase synchronize with the existing wattage to voltage plan. So satisfying. So satisfying. And now, Daddy Dearest, grip. Who lived with me and Mama when I was only 28 to start a new life as a hotshot detective? It's payback time. <laughs> yes, yes it is. <laughs> her daddy hadn't seen her in quite some time, and from the looks of it, he was in for a shock. Harold? Harold, it, it's 4.30 in the morning, Harold Day Finnegan. <laughs> Y y yes, Tessie, uh, I know. Harold, Harold, I want you back in bed now. The kids will be getting up in two hours. Y yes, dear, I, I, I know. Harold, Harold. Suddenly, there was the sound of someone at the front door. Bitsy threw the electronics on the desk and dropped her car behind it. Had she blown it? Would Grip, her father, catch on the act before she had time to set up the electrode so it would cook his brain like an egg on a rolling hot sidewalk in Death Valley? If Death Valley had sidewalks. The doorknob slowly twisted open and... It was Trixie! Back to finish off what she had started, and this time, she was packing a magnum. So, there it was. A jealous wife and a vengeful daughter. The only thing that could have made this worse was Sheila Krylinski herself. In her hand was a pizza box, but but this was no ordinary pizza box. This pizza was a special, with everything on it, hot and spicy, guaranteed to explode in your mouth. Finally, undeniably, Grip's absolute worst nightmare. A jealous wife, a vengeful daughter, and the villainous Sheila Kryline, already upset about the abduction of her son, Pizza Guy, and committed to killing Grip ever since he inadvertently rode his car over her prized rose bushes during a high speed car chase two years ago. All out for blood, bent on killing him. The only thing, and I mean the only thing, that could have made this worse was. King Kong! Oh, oh, oh come, come on! on. <laughs> just, just kidding. Just, just kidding. G give me some credit. <sighs> Our luck. Not only do we have a third-rate writer, but he's a third-rate writer that thinks he's funny. Oh, I will get you for that, Sheila, you two-bit rug salesperson. Instantly, Sheila Kryline, master criminal, developed a splitting headache. Ow! Did he do that? I guess so. His play, you know. Suddenly, a loud snap was heard, followed by... Ow! Who's there? Behind the couch. At a loaded pizza box. 
So come out nice and easy. Not so fast, sister. I've got a magnum rubber band here, and it's itching to go off. Wait, did she just say a rubber band? Doesn't, doesn't look like violence. violence. Oh. So drop the pizza, girl. You drop the band, kid. I got us a stoolie here. Yeah, come out of there slowly, stoolie. It's Bitsy. That's right, Sheila. It's me, and I wouldn't use those weapons if I were you. One move in your full parade on it. Which is not only bad news for you, but it's also distinctively not biodegradable. I I think she means it. Hey, you there. Name's Bitsy. Okay, great. Bitsy, I'm just here to get rid of one guy. A guy who's messing around with the Russian punter who's messing around with my husband. I don't got any beef with you. That's so? Yep. Girl Scout's on her. <laughs> Wait, you were a Girl Scout too? Mm-hmm. Troop 617. Troop, troop 422. Jeez! And you, Sheila? You got a beef? It's an olive and mushroom. Get out! I love olive and mushroom. Hey, I'm after this guy, Grip, too. He's taken my son hostage. No. <laughs> Yes, you may know my son. He has kind of sandy, lightish, darkish kind of hair with medium, tallish, shortish height. He uh, has average eyes and carries a. You don't, you don't mean? mean? Yes! Pizza guy! Yes, that's my son. Grip's got him now. That grip is dog meat. He's history. He's math. Math? I always hated math even more than history. So we're all saying we're here to do the same thing. Crush that crumb grip like a worm under a high-heeled shoe. Ew. Ew. Like a gummy there on a darkened movie theater floor. Absolutely. Right on. Hey, you guys want a slice? <laughs> no thanks, I just ate. Nothing for me, bad for the complexion. Hmm. You know, I think we could be fast friends. Sure, <laughs> why not? Honestly, lovey, you don't know what you're asking for. This isn't like a western flick. You don't qu kill one of them just because. You're simply jealous. It doesn't have to be a man, Margo. I'm just telling you that someone has to go. There are too many of them in this little production of yours. It's getting cluttered, complicated. Jealousy's got nothing to do with it. Okay, love. Who do you have me kill off? Sheila? Whom I've built up to be the criminal brain of our century, and who must be here through the climactic confrontation with Grip? Oh, come now, dear. Oh, Trixie here, who is our key link with the chief of police who has yet to make her parents. Or perhaps link to be Bitsy, who alone ultimately has the electronic gadgets to bring Grip to his doom. Margo, I am simply saying. Or maybe you think it should be Grip, our hero. Certainly expendable, hmm? Margo! Eduardo, I create characters because they're needed to make my point, not because they're fun to play with. Do you understand? What about Dolores? Huh? Dolores, what about her? I can't. What do you mean, you can't? I mean, I can't just kill her off. Somehow, she seems crucial to the play, though I don't know how, just yet. Well, no need to get irate, Chiba. If you have had the guts to knock one off, I understand. My love, my love!
Maybe there's some way, some one. Hmm. Harold. <laughs> Harold. <laughs> As they sat and laughed, uh, he hit the doorknob, jarred them back to reality. Could it be? Grip? Each of them took their instrument of torture and scrambled to hiding place. Then, the door swung open. Pizza Guy, who just hours ago was leading a pretty good life for Pizza Guy, but who now found himself fearing for his life like a worm on the end of a hook. He was followed closely by Rip and the Russian hunter. Hey, Christina. What is it, Grip? It's darkness, sweetheart. But the real question is why. I left the lights on when I left. You just turned off, bozo. Man, I have had enough of you, pizza guy! It's okay, Grip. We just won't tip him. <laughs> oh, man! No, Christina. Where was I? You just turned off the light. Exactly. Which means that the lights must have been on when I came in. Oh, Grip, how I admire your intellect. Oh, thanks, doll. But when two and two don't make four, something's wrong, isn't it? Your calculator is broken? <laughs> hey, do you guys smell something? Olives and... An olive and mushroom special. Extra cheese, duh. Hey, wait a minute! There's only one person I know that would order an olive and mushroom special. Can it be? That's right, Sonny Boy. It's Mom. Oh, Mom! What a relief! I thought some other pizza guy was honing in on my territory. You are dumb, aren't you? It's Kralinski! <laughs> Don't even think about it, Grip. <laughs> Trixie? That's right, lover boy. <laughs> Hi. Dad. Betty? Bitsy. Oh yeah, Bitsy, Bitsy. <laughs> I thought you were... Dead. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. N no, no. Brunette. I, I thought you were a brunette. Great memory, Dad. After you left Bob and I, I vowed I would get you one. I went deep undercover to find you, dyed my hair, grew the bangs out, and I began wearing flats. <gasps> yes, that is how much I wanted you. <laughs> and now I've got you. So sit down, Dad. Oh, that you wouldn't kill your own father, would you? Kill? No, that's too good for you. Oh, I've got something better in store for you. You don't mean? Yes, heavy metal. I don't get it. Dad? Dad, what's all that noise in there? It's too loud. I can't sleep. Dad, Mabel won't shut up. Well, he you didn't snore. Well, he didn't walk in your sleep. Do not. Do too. Not. Do.
Tessie! Sh Sugar Plum! Tess! C can you get Nigel and Bert, please? I'll just be a... Suddenly, over the bullhorn... All right in there, Grip. Can you hear me? This is Chief of Police, Johnny Ryan. The Chief, the of, Chief of Police? My husband? I know you're holding my wife hostage in there, Grip. What? I said, I know you're holding my wife hostage in there, Grip. Man, he's got good ears. Let her go, and maybe we'll go easy on you. Hey, wait a minute! I'm supposed to be the hero here! Just say the lines, will you? Dad... Go on, beat it, Trixie. You can never really kill me with that rubber band anyways. But... But... You heard it, Tim. Make like a banana and leave! That split, Harold. Make like a banana and split. Jeez, what? Everyone is a writer here. Looks like the band's finally stopped playing for you, sister. Maybe this time, but I'll be back. <gasps> Arnold Schwarzenegger, again! If you're so great, then how come I've never seen you on TV? Oh, that's so funny. I forgot to laugh. Dirk, Mabel, it is only five in the morning. You two, get back to bed this instant, or I may see to it that you never wake up again. Harold? Y yes, dear. I want to talk to you for a moment. Hmm. Y yes, dear. Okay, that's it. I've had it. Where in the world is this play going? I mean, the, everything's all mixed up. I'm supposed to be the hero here, and Harold's got it, so they all think that I'm the villain. Relax. It, it works. Good news, he's almost done. No, I'm with Bob here. For a moment there, I thought he was making progress, but then he brings in his wife and his, no offense, sales buddy out of spite or something? Hey, not my choice. I mean, it's a pitiful way to write a script. Look, I'm thinking we go after him. I'm saying we go after him, scare him, let him know we're through with doing this. Look, Betsy, we've already it's tried. It's Marcia. Oh, Marcia, I'm Bob. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Look, we've already tried to get him the. We've already thought about go running out on a script. It seems so cruel. Really? It's the best thing for everyone in the long run. So here's what I'm saying. When the chief of police finally comes in, here's what we do. So, Eduardo, better? Better? What is it you're doing? I'm cleaning up. Cleaning up? Yes, cleaning up. Shortly, there will be three less characters in the play. Three? One. I said one. Didn't I? What, whatever you say, Margo. Are you saying Harold is... Exacto mundo. Oh, Harold. And just wait till you see the finale. I intend to come out myself. What a twist. Poor, poor Harold. Look, Eduardo, you can't start feeling sorry for a thought form, for crying out loud. But he doesn't know he's a thought form. It's so sad. Grip was definitely in trouble. 
the bands, the bombs, and worst of all, that heavy metal rattling of your drums like a possum in a garbage can. All right, Rip. I. What? Will you take that thing off of him? I said, all right, Rip. Oh. I. I thought you said call bite lip. That makes no sense. That's kind of why I said what. Oh, Grip. What logic? Shut up. All right, Grip. I may have gotten my son back, but you still owe me for that rosebush you ran over two years ago. Seventy-two fifty. I'm not going to pay you back for that one, Krolinski. You see, Section 4, Paragraph 3 of the Police Handbook states that in the specific incident of a... Shut up! Grip was a man of principle. I ain't interested in no police handbook. Mom, can we go yet? Star Trek reruns are going to be on in 10 minutes. So, you ain't gonna pay, are you? Well, there's paying, and then there's paying. You know what I mean? I don't. It makes no sense. There's paying, and there's paying. Will you tell your girlfriend the Russian painter to... Spencer! Whatever. The next time she opens her trap, she is going to get wired up to this pizza box. Capiche? <sighs> Capiche. Now, you are about to go on a little trip. And by trip, I mean blast off. <laughs> yeah, and I've got just the thing for you to listen to on the way up, Dad. Would Grip escape? Was he finally going to meet his doom? Was this the end? Let's hope so. Then, suddenly... Alright, Cryline, drop the pizza and step away. We know all about it. What? But how could you? Sorry, Sheila. My hubby here forced me to rat on you. That's right. And you, police officer number one, take care of Bitsy over there. Yes, sir. What would you like to do? I know a nice restaurant not far from here. We could... I mean, cuff her, you idiot. But sir, the author doesn't like violence. Handcuff her. Ah. And you, Grip, are you okay? We didn't mean to... What? <laughs> take that off him. I said, and you, Grip. Are you okay? Oh, sir, I thought you said, can you drip far from the bay? Oh. Well, that doesn't make any sense now, does it? That's why he said what? Sure is why, sweetheart. Man, it sure is great to know that the world is now once again free from crime and violence. All right, you know what to do, police officers. One in chief, do your duty, arrest them! Right, that's it, I have had it. We have you there, Mr. Author. We've been through an entire play without a name, and we are sick of it. Do you understand? Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just, 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 just wait a minute though, cause I, I'm just about done. Oh. I'll name you as, as soon as I'm. No, no. That ain't good enough. Thought forms got rights too, you know. Goes double for me. Now, 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 see here, everybody. Just, just calm down, everyone. No, he's right. You've used every cheap trick and stupid simile to make this one of the most stupid, idiotic plays we have ever worked in. And you use way too much narration. A play is supposed to rely on dialogue. If you want to narrate everything, go write a novel. Face it, Harold. You're a terrible playwright. 
And then you bring in people like me just for some real life vengeance. Well, you know, you know, there, there needs to be this like happy ending. <laughs> and if you, if you, you just, and uh, now you're going to let this wimp of a detective grip get away with this? After having built me up to be the master of intelligence and with enough intelligence to wipe his brain clean. Well, like I said, th there has to be a happy ending. <laughs> Wait a minute. I should be the one taking over at this point. This entire play hinges on me being the master criminal of the century. If anybody should be angry, it's me. And I am. You guys! Ha! You, you think you got it bad? You, you haven't even seen the likes of it! Crips got me all over the place! He, he has everybody thinking that I'm the villain here! And I'm definitely the hero of the dang story! Plus, he gave me a water pistol and he never even gave me the time to use it in the show! At least you got a pistol. We're armed with rubber bands because Harold here doesn't like violence in his plays. What audience is gonna buy that? I say, we nail this guy good. Let's get yeah. it. <laughs> now, now see, just, 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 just wait a minute here. Can't we discuss this? Oh. I must be going crazy. Well, well, looks like Harold's about to bite it, eh? Well, go on. Don't let me stop you. No, no, no wait a minute. H who are you? I did not bring you into this play. You leave this instant. Harold, you funny fellow. You still don't get it. I'm the author here. You are just a thoughtful. But that, that's impossible. Here, I'll show you who's the boss here. Arr, 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 arr. <laughs> you see how? <clears throat> who's really in charge here? <clears throat> well, I, <clears throat> I was just clearing my throat. Here, uh, see how you like this. What? What, you were supposed to bark like a dog! <clears throat> oh, Harold, I'm so sorry. Didn't you wonder why you're so painting this act? But, but I'm a carpet salesman. Joke. On you. I'm a carpet salesman. My invention. W with two children and Tessie. How comical. I, I just want to be a writer. <laughs> you. You, as if you had some say in it. Dolores? 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 Hi, fellas. Hi, Harold. Thought maybe you could use some help here? But you. I didn't write Snorbly Snork Crack Boggity Pie. Yeah, Margo. Uh, just needed a little oh, a, a help, a, a little boost, you know? Uh, hey, Dolores, uh, you're okay. Oh, yeah? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Twinkle, 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 little star, I wonder what you are. No, no, you can't. This isn't possible. What isn't possible, Margo? He, he's written us out of the script. He <laughs> what? He can't do anything. You silly. You're the author here. He's just a... A... Uh, a thought form. That's what I thought. But maybe... Maybe... You don't mean... Oh my. But Harold, wait! We didn't mean it! We... Look, it's that De Dolores with the blinking control, remember? Dolores. Dolores, help. We, we like thought forms. Margaret would never really get rid of you. I didn't know.
No, they were thought forms. Sad. Harold? Dolores? Harold, please. Well, this has been quite the play. No offense to all of you, but it's a little scary when your life starts looking like it was just one big illusion. Know what I mean? And, and, and you, Dolores, you really saved my bacon out there. What was I doing wrong? How, how'd you know what to do to help? Oh, you didn't do anything wrong. I just have some connections, you know, with the real author. <laughs> 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 the real author. <laughs> what a kidder. You really had us going, Dolores. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I think I'll write TV ads for you know? They're safer. Oh, no. Um, uh, uh, Tessie, uh, she'll kill me. Just think her nice, Harold. You can do it. You've done it before. Tessie. Fine. Lovable. Darling! Oh, Shelly. Your dad and I are just so proud of you, dear. Do you really like it? Oh, we love it. To write a whole play is such an accomplishment. And your tenth one, too. Yeah, kind of like an anniversary play. I just don't know how you do it. Where'd you get the ideas for all these characters anyway? Do you really want to know? Of course. Well, Grip here is Uncle Bernie. You know when he gets all mean-faced? You know, I thought there was a resemblance. And Tessie's. And Debbie. And Debbie. Just like her. Experimentalers. And let's see. Pizza guy's Hal, of course. Your brother's not going to like that. I love the nose ring out. Well. Oh, Bitsy. Bitsy's a dog groomer. Do Barbara? with all the stereo equipment. Oh, perfect. And Christina's my sixth grade teacher, Miss Ripplin. Remember? Oh, that's sweet. She'd like that. I can see the resemblance now. And hey, Mom, guess who Dolores is? I, I don't really know, Shelly. Oh, Mom, it's you. <laughs> if you say so, dear. I just don't see it. Oh, Mom. Thanks for thinking of me, though. And the rest of them? Are just people I dreamed it up. Well, we'd better go. Your father's waiting to talk to you himself. We're both so proud. Oh, Shelly, who's this? Who? Harold, you know, the writer. The supposed author of the play. My gosh, who'd you dream him up after? Uh, Rob Frankel. Rob who? Rob Frankel, an author, an actor, a playwright, I think. I've never heard of him. Yeah, well, you can find his name in the playbill. His name just sort of came to me. Oh, Shelly, you're so creative. So, what are you going to call this play? I'm thinking of just playing Who Done It, like a spy play. But it's really asking who wrote the play. Who done it? I like that. Although it seems more like who done it and to whom, don't you think? They exit, laughing. The end. Who done it? I like that. Although it seems more like who done it and to whom, don't you think? 